think about as you think about Trump, we are all focused on what he says. And I would submit that's exactly what he wants. This is a man who cared, spent his whole life trying to be a celebrity. And he, he, he wants to have all eyes on him. And all eyes are on him 24 seven. And he uses that to drive the discussion by one, by many times outrageous and sometimes not factually accurate statements. <laughs> We're being delicate here. <laughs> but there's a method to his madness because he dominates the discussion when it goes wrong in a bad direction. He comes out with another step at a statement and all the press runs to his new statement. I would suggest we start focusing on what he is doing. <laughs> Quickly, four things. Yes, he said a lot of things about NATO he should not have said. But we on this dais and others for two decades have been pushing the allies in Europe to spend more on defense. He's actually getting them to do it. And in the end of the day, he is being checked by the Congress in terms of his ability to walk away from NATO. Um, trade, um, he is, I think, generate, I think whether, President Cl whether Secretary Clinton had been elected president or President Trump, we were gonna have to address the trade imbalances with China whether it was Republicans or Democrats, there's bipartisan agreement about that. And we'll see whether he is able to accomplish uh, uh, that. And finally, uh, on this talk versus action, I thought it was very interesting. After the G7 summit and the NATO summit, everybody thought the president has destroyed our relationships with Europe largely over trade. And last week, very interesting, the person who heads the institution that Donald Trump likes least of all in Europe, the European Commission, comes to Washington and gets a trade deal, at least the outlines of a trade deal, which would say no tariffs, no non-tariff barriers, and no subsidies. If we could deliver on that, that would be a very good thing indeed.